Good afternoon and welcome to our Screen Industry WorkSafe Tasmania COVID Safe Workplace Workshop. Um, I hope you've all been keeping safe uh, during these difficult times. Uh, for those of you uh, who I haven't met before, my name is Jackie Allen and I'm a Deputy Secretary at Department of State Growth. My areas of responsibility are cultural and tourism development. So I look after Events Tasmania, Screen Tasmania, Arts Tasmania, um, tourism and hospitality industry support, and we also support the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. Can I start by acknowledging and paying respect to the traditional and original owners of this land and to pay respect to those who passed before us and to acknowledge today's Tasmanian Aboriginal community who are custodians of this land. We recognise the impact of the current COVID situation um, on all industry sectors, uh, but the cultural and creative sector um, most specifically. Um, and these sessions that we've organised today are intended to provide you with access to information about the process of developing a COVID safe workplace plan. Um, a few points on how the session is going to work. Um, to begin with, if you haven't already, can I ask you to please mute at your end so we can deal with any issues of feedback. Um, this session is being broadcast live, so please uh, forgive us if we have any slight delays with the tech. Um, but we're also recording the session and that will be available on our website later this week. Um, and we'll send out an email to everyone who's registered to let you know when that's available. The way we're going to uh, run the format is kick off uh, with a presentation from Brad Parker of WorkSafe Tasmania about how to complete your plan um, and any tips he might have. And then we'll uh, run through a question and answer session. We've had a couple of questions submitted to us prior to this workshop, but we also encourage you to make use of the chat function on Teams um, and send any of your specific questions through. We'll pick them up and we'll address them with Brad. If we can't answer all the questions today, uh, we are developing some support material that will be available on the State Growth website, um, and we will also send this around. Uh, before we kick off, I think it's important to reflect that every business and every situation is unique. So the intent in providing you with this guidance around the plan is to give broad guidance, but you will need to think specifically about your own situation as you develop that plan. And, and that will become obvious, I think, as we work through the process with Brad. Um, I'm going to kick off uh, with a question that's been raised in a number of the workshops that we've run earlier. Um, so this is what this is one of four that we're doing today. Uh, but we have been asked uh, whether the COVID safe workplace plan process applies also to voluntary um, and not for profit organisations. And Brad also just asking you to give uh, a definition of the term PCBU, which gets used a lot in the WorkSafe documentation. So over to you, Brad. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Um, so, um, yeah, a PCBU is a person conducting a business or undertaking. So um, it originates from the Work Health and Safety Act. Um, and what it seeks to do is um, describe the people who typically run a business, but there are it's broad enough to pick up others who are, are undertaking functions, um, specifically like volunteer organisations where they may not be actually running a business of profit, um, but they are still um, undertaking some form of activity that uh, as a consequence of those activities may expose people to risk. Um, and as a consequence of that, they have an obligation to do um, all things reasonable and practical to um, to reduce the, the risk of injury or exposure to a hazard. Now, obviously, COVID-19 is a hazard in the workplace and hence the reason why um, we uh, all play workplaces um, and all PCBUs need to have a COVID safe plan in place to demonstrate that they're actively managing the risks associated with COVID-19. Thanks, Brad. Um, I'd now invite you to share your presentation to the screen and kick off. OK, so what I propose to do is um, I just walk through a, uh, a few 
websites and, and work us through um, to get to the end point of working through a, building a COVID safe plan um, and also point to some guidance material on the way through. So the first um, point of call is the coronavirus.tas.gov.au um, website. This is a place you go to if you as a starting point to get information in regards to the virus. And specifically, um, if you go into facts and zip down here into resources, um, what that seeks to do is provide a whole heap of information that may be useful depending on what you're, um, um, you're doing in your business or the activities that you wish to undertake. Um, you'll see as you scroll down a little bit further, you've got posters and there's things um, that you can download and put around your workplace in order to ensure that um, people are reminded that they need to um, um, be undertaking um, um, certain activities or behaviours. And in this particular case, there's one they're talking about what you should, how you should go about washing your hands properly. The more important one um, from my point of view is I want to keep going down and you'll see that um, um, we've got current directions and notices. So essentially we're under a state of emergency under the Emergency Management Act at the moment. This allows a whole series of um, of activities to occur. Um, we're also under a public health emergency um, under the Public Health Act, which allow specific um, directions to be made. I want to focus in on this direction number 16, um, workplace COVID plan number one. And if we click on that, what that seeks to do is outline what are the obligations that you as a PCBU um, or a person running a business need to be aware of in regards to managing your business. So we're just going to briefly run through um, these and then we'll talk a little bit more as we start to build the plan. But you'll see that what's in these orders also are reflected in the plan. So that's the reason why I'm starting here. The first one is uh, maintaining um, where practicable 1.5 um, meters between people. So you'll notice that it says where practical. There are times when you are unable to um, to maintain the 1.5 meter separation distance, and this basically recognises that it's 1.5 wherever you can. But notice there are some times when it becomes a little bit of a challenge. If it is becoming a little bit of a challenge in that space, then you need to look at other means of trying to control the risk. And that can be as simply as trying to minimise the amount of time um, that people are in close proximity to, to each other or making sure that they may be wearing gloves or other sort of forms of means to protect them from the transmission of the disease. Moving into the next component, it talks about density. Um, this particular notice is referring to the one person per four square metres. That has subsequently been um, uh, superseded by another order um, which came out after this one and we are now working on the um, uh, one person per two square metres. What that means is it essentially doubled the number of people that you're allowed to have in any designated area. The designated area is uh, essentially a room or a, an area to which you're going to have people and what you need to be doing is to be working out how many people you're able to have in a particular room by um, measuring the length and the breadth and multiplying them out and then dividing by two, and that will give you a number in regards to how many people are allowed in a particular area. You should even, um, put a sign up on the door of the entrance point so as people um, uh, come in, if they look around the room and, and it says, if I know more than four people in this room and there's already four people in there, then they have to go somewhere else or or wait to other people to, to move on. So it's really important that you've actually done that level of base level analysis of where people can fit. And that also goes to the total number of people you're allowed in your workplace or the area that you're working. Moving through into um, providing um, or getting information, the reason why I started with the coronavirus website is that there is a requirement um, as a business operator and owner or PCBU that you um, you need to have access to reputable sources of information and I would suggest that um, you use the coronavirus website as, uh, as your source of reputable information and it says that you need to go there on a um, on frequent basis to make sure what you're doing is um, up to date and appropriate. I think it's also important to recognise that um, the coronavirus uh, is something that moves very quickly, um, and at the moment we're in a a point of 
not much change happening, um, touch wood, um, but we've only got to look at what um, what's happening in Victoria to see that um, it can get out out of hand very quickly um, and we can we'll see that um, what we're trying to do now in the in the way we behave and the systems and processes we put up to to reduce the risk will put us in good stead when the board is open and we start to see more people moving around the state um, we then talk about cleaning and um, of the workplace so obviously um, given the tr the way the disease is transmitted um, through um, droplets um, it's important to make sure that um, um, those frequently touched areas where people touch with their hands um, are cleaned on a regular basis and that they're cleaned with the appropriate disinfectant um, in order to um, to reduce the risk of people um, next person coming along touching whatever it was and then potentially um, allowing it to to coming in contact with their body um, so cleaning there's a couple of aspects to that the first one is um, where you clean um, and again that's the identification of um, high frequency touch points and then the frequency to which you um, you go through the process of actually um, cleaning those areas so the more frequent something or uh, an area is I I, you know, FPOS machines or, or going to storerooms or, or particular props or, or um, access to bathrooms or change rooms, they need to be cleaned more frequently than potential other areas where, um, where there is probably less risk because they're, they're not touched that frequently. Um, there also is a requirement around um, uh, those people who come into the workplace, they need to um, uh, manage their hygiene. Um, so that means washing their hands with soap and water, um, identifying those activities where you need to um, make sure that people have washed their hands before they start or undertake that task and potentially when they've concluded of that task um, so it's a matter of those basic hygiene type activities and also sending the message around trying to avoid people touching um, their you know, their face and and those other areas where there is a potential risk of um, spread of the disease um, there's a requirement to make sure that you have supplies and cleaning products available within the workplace whether that's wipes to wipe down high frequency areas versus um, cleaning and disinfected materials um, but they need to be provided now obviously any chemical used within the workplace um, needs to be managed appropriately because it does produce a risk so getting a copy of the material safety data sheets and making sure that you're actively managing um, the safe use of those chemicals as part of cleaning is all um, a general requirement as part of um, running that business and undertaking those activities um, once we've identified what the controls are for the workplace, then it's important to make sure that people are aware of it. And that means that people coming onto um, or into your workplace, whether onto a set or whether into the, a venue where a, a show may be on or, or whatever the case may be, there needs to be information provided around what the expectations are of those individuals uh, moving into to those environments. Um, and you need need to have uh, provided training and instruction to people involved in making sure that the controls are being applied um, and that the, there's an adequate supervision regime in place to, to ensure that people are doing the things that they need to be doing. Um, so what that seeks to do is to make sure that everyone understands what the requirements are and everyone's working to, um, to reduce the risk um, should this um, hazard enter the workplace um, and that it, the chance of it, it actually taking off and um, is um, reduced significantly. There's also a requirement for um, um, people who enter the workplace um, to uh, make sure that they don't come into the area if they're showing signs or symptoms. Um, we're seeing lots of that on particularly in, in Victoria and other areas where um, people are still moving around when they've got uh, showing signs or symptoms or they're under a quarantine order. So there's a requirement here that um, that if you've got people that are showing signs or symptoms that you don't let them into your workplace um, and that they need to go and get tested and, and go through that process to, um, to satisfy um, the requirements around not spreading it in your workplace and then the final requirement goes to um, making sure that um, you've um, 
well, not the final one, one more before the final. So this one actually talks about the 21 days um, of keeping information. So if you get people to sign in at your workplace um, and uh, through a sign-in register or you've got secure um, surveillance um, uh, tapes or those, sorts of things, anything that would demonstrate that someone was in your workplace, there's a requirement to keep those records for 21 days. This aids in um, in allowing for um, contact tracing should there be an outbreak um, and some of the people that um, have been in your workplace or been involved in your activities is able to be traced. And then the final requirement is that anything you do in regards to trying to mitigate the risk needs to be written down. Um, so there is a record in writing and the best way to do that is to prepare a COVID safe plan. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll zip across into um, the WorkSafe Tasmania website um, and what that seeks to do is to provide you with some guidance around the plan itself and also um, some guidance materials. So if we go into the Safe Workplace Framework and what that does is provide you with a range of options in regards to information. Um, we'll talk about the guidelines in a minute, but what I propose to do is just go down a little bit further and we've got um, a, a COVID safe plan for a small business or a COVID safe plan for large businesses. Obviously the number is 20 people. Um, we'll zip into the um, medium size one. Um, the reason why I like this one is because it provides a little bit more detail and a bit of a to-do list in regards to um, the types of things that you should be doing in your workplace. Now, hopefully, it's still loading down. I'm having a little bit of internet lag at the moment. So, um, so what this plan essentially does is provide you um, with um, a, a list of those things that are reflected in the um, public health order that will then allow you to work your way through and prepare some documentation. Um, I'm struggling to get this document to move so you have to bear with me for a moment I'm going to have to uh, I seem to have struggling a little bit with internet at the moment I've got a bad network connection so just bear with me until I can scroll down Anyway, unfortunately, it doesn't look like this document is going to be um, behaving for me, so um, I'll just have to talk my way through it. So um, when you open this document, um, it's broken up into uh, seven um, particular areas. The first one being the management of risk. Um, so as with any workplace, um, you need to to manage your risk, and that may be that you know your safety risks, I should say. So that may uh, typically would mean identifying hazards in the workplace. It would identify. It would talk about um, identifying other um, hazards that need to be managed, and typically you would have a risk assessment process that underpins those hazards as part of that process. Um, what we're saying is COVID-19 is essentially just a another hazard, um, and, but you need to manage it um, in order to reduce the risk of it um, occurring um, or exposure of the spread in the workplace. Um, so if you've got a, a workplace that um, um, has an agreed system or an approved system, then you should be using that. If you haven't, then this plan, um, which I can't move, I've got a frozen screen, so please excuse me, I'm going to have to do something more. No, I've got completely lost it. No, my computer's died in this space, so I apologise for that. I might just, I can't get it to do anything. Um, so just moving through in that space, um, the, the next requirement under the plan will be to um, make sure you've got your physical distancing. So that will go through the process of making sure that you're able to, um, um, you've got your 1.5 metre distances. You've got controls in place where 
there are potentially people aren't able to do that. Now, obviously, in film production and, and show production, there are times when maintaining 1.5 distance, uh, 1.5 metres apart is neither is not really practical and very difficult to achieve. So the question then is from an organisation perspective, what is it that you actually need to um, to do in order to mitigate that risk and things like that you may want to consider in that space um, is to make sure that it, before anyone goes on um, on screen that you've uh, on on you know in you've got uh, hand sanitizer around that people are actually um, uh, facing away that you've you've redirected your activities in order to minimise the amount of time um, that they're actually spent. Uh, doing being in close proximity are all things that um, will assist in actually trying to um, uh, allow you to 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 manage those risks um, you know obviously there's lots of people involved in um, the production of, of film production and those sorts of things so it's a matter of um, working your way through identifying those components that need to be cleaned on a regular basis Basis, making sure that um, you are able to uh, uh, limit the people's exposure to props and those sorts of things, so you have less people actually touching props. Or if you, if you do have people touching props, then you've got cleaning regimes around that, so as the um, there is a an ability to reduce that um, that risk. Um, but uh, here we go. It looks like we've caught up again. The show. Um, so again, it, those are the sorts of things that you you need to consider as part of um, of your plan. Um, cleaning and hygiene. Again, as we spoke about, there are times when they are making sure that people, when they come onto a set, that they've actually um, gone through that process of uh, of making sure that they're uh, uh, they're actively. Sorry, it's going to jump there. Can you still see my screen? Can I just confirmation that, please? I think. No, Brad, we might need you to reshare again. Yeah, okay. I apologise. I've just, everything's locked up on me. So um, let's try that. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, so it's a matter of working way, your way through those areas. Now, to assist you in that close process um, and working out what those hazardous areas are, um, there is a, uh, a guideline which has been provided for um, that specifically talks about um, not that one, uh, the film industry. I might just sit back and see. Yep, um, you'll see, you can scroll down and you'll find um, cultural and creative, and that specifically identifies um, people involved in visual arts and fine arts and photography and, and media and filmmaking. And what that does is provide you with some prompts around things you need to consider when developing your COVID plan. So it specifically goes to things that are directly relevant to your industry um, and things that you might not have considered when you were actually doing your normal risk assessment process. Um, and you can see that that works for cleaning, hygiene. Um, we scroll down to, to um, restricting access, knowing who's coming onto your sets, making sure that you're able to, um, to control who's in, don't have all the people involved who don't need to be there, keep your set to the minimum, rotate your shots and rotate your um, the way you operate or give some consideration to the way you operate in regards to um, um, only having certain people on the, the set at particular of time, um, recognise that where um, you've got people who are going through the process of makeup and, and those sorts of areas, there are um, there's a, gu a guide for um, hairdressers um, and beauty therapists and those sort of things that you might refer to them and make sure that the controls that you have in place in that area um, are being applied specifically to that particular um, activity. Um, so there's lots of information available and and it's really quite important that you actually start to analyse the tasks that you perform in the in the, the activities that you're doing and trying to look at where 
So potential transmission points may be, and then looking at what controls that you can apply in order, and that's what gets reflected in your, your COVID safe plan. Um, physical distancing we spoke about before, and again, it's just a recognition around, can we do things differently that might reduce our risk? Um, or if not, are there areas that we can just try and work our way through to, um, um, to reduce that exposure, you know, sending people on um, breaks at staggered times, reducing the minima, just minimising the number of people that need to be actively in a set um, or in an activity that you're um, you're working on. Um, providing instruction. And a lot of businesses are actually, particularly on big events and, and we've got lots of people involved, they actually have um, people identified as being um, uh, COVID controllers, so they have a dedicated role in making sure that that people are following the rules, that they're um, that they're the the activities as people are needed and required to exercise uh, or to do the activity are managed appropriately and there's some really good controls in place, again, to reduce that risk. And, and it's that, that issue around the likelihood and consequence, you know, what's the likelihood of, of you know, this um, disease being spreading, but also what's the consequences if you're in the middle of an activity um, and someone comes down with COVID, then it pretty much shuts down the, the whole uh, 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 production. Um, so what we're trying to do here is make sure there's enough controls in place to ensure that that doesn't actually work. Encouraging people to um, to recognise that if they're um, they've got symptoms or they they even remotely um, that they're taking appropriate steps to step away from the um, and out of the process until they've actually confirmed that they're they're able to per, um, be on the set and working through those activities or, or whatever that the business is undertaking. Responding to COVID safe plans is also something that you need to consider. Um, if people, if there is an outbreak, then having access to um, um, public health is really quite important. There's a lot of information there because they will come in and, and take control and they'll start to do um, tracking of the people that have been involved in your workplace. Um, it's really quite also important to recognise that, you know, when you have people delivering things to your, um, uh, your site or your workplace, place where you're performing that you've got a management system in place in order to make sure that they're um, they're adequately being controlled in regards to um, the way they interact with the people involved in the production and, and those sorts of things so um, there is a little bit of um, um, you know whilst I, I normally say keep it simple or try and keep it as simple as possible uh, when you've got a lot of activity activities occurring at one time in regards to um, particularly when the film industry and those sorts of things, um, it, a lot of planning is um, the, the way forward in that space and I'd encourage you to, um, to, to make sure that you actually work your way through each step in the process and, and do your risk assessments and work out what your controls are in order to make sure that at the end of the day you're able to, to reduce uh, the, and minimise the, the risk of, that, um, of the disease. So I do apologise for the um, the slight pause when the whole thing fell over um, on my screen. Um, I will just before I hand back to um, to Jackie is to just um, um, click on here um, and hopefully I just want to touch on the template again. So it seems to be working better now. So this is your um, your COVID safe plan, and it's just a matter of briefly filling out what actions you're taking in regards to managing these specific areas. Um, it's a fillable PDF, so you can type in all the information you need to fill out. Um, and that basically says, when this is the way we are going to manage our COVID um, safe activities uh, or activities and make sure that everyone is COVID safe and, and we reduce the risk of the activity um, um, being put at risk through an outbreak um, and you know, at the moment we're in that, that period of being quite low in regards to um, our overall exposure, but as the borders open up and the people move around a lot more, I think it's really quite um, important that a, uh, a business um, needs to consider, well, if if we were to be exposed to COVID, how would we, we cope and, and do our systems actually allow us to actually provide a defence or a barrier around it taking a hole and 
hold of our business and shutting us down. And and we want what we want to do is keep all the people involved in that workplace um, and in, involved in the production in a, a safe condition. And the way we do that is making sure that we've got appropriate controls in place. All right. At that point, I'll pass back to Jackie. I think. Thanks, Brad. A um, couple of questions uh, that have come through. Um, first up, uh, you've shown us the COVID safe plan template. Do people have to develop their plan on the template or can they develop their own document? No, no, they can develop their own document. The, the main thing is that um, um, what we're seeking is uh, that you've actually written down and you've gone through a process where you've identified all those points where there is a potential risk um, and what controls you've put in place to mitigate, mitigate those risks. So no, there's, um, these are just the, uh, an example of a tool that you could use, but you could quite easily have um, develop your own or have um, other